the very first thing I thought I should talk about is when does our code, which is in this case 2012 IBC, but things of the kind we are talking about are no longer in the IBC. <clears throat> Pretty much the entire structural provisions uh, are by reference to AC 710. So the specific question is, when does AC 710 require us to do dynamic analysis as opposed to equivalent lateral force procedure as the basis of design? Dynamic analysis, you need to understand, is allowed always. Uh, there, is, there is no situation. I, I, I take that back. There is a one case in the entire document AC7 when you are analyzing the base of a structure in two-stage analysis that is that is permitted by the code in, under certain circumstances. Only in that one case we restrict you only to equivalent lateral force procedure. All other cases dynamic analysis is always allowed. The only question is when is it required? And, and that question is answered in AC 7 table 12.6-1. This table has improved a great deal from AC 705 to AC 710. Even then, it is not the easiest table to read and understand. So we have paraphrased the table into a flowchart, which I think is a whole lot nicer and I will use this flowchart to explain to you when dynamic analysis is forced upon us by AC 710. First thing is if your structure is assigned to design category B or C, then dynamic analysis would never be required by AC 710. Equivalent lateral force procedure is always permitted. Even if your design category is D, E, or F, under two circumstances, dynamic analysis will never be required. First is if you have a risk category one or two structure, <clears throat> that is miscellaneous occupancy or uh, standard occupancy, less than or equal to two-story stall then equivalent lateral force procedure always permitted, irrespective of how irregular your structure may be. Also, a structure of light frame construction, which can be wooden studs with sheathing or metal studs with sheathing, cold form uh, steel studs with sheathing. Both ways, it is light frame construction, and irrespective of height irregularity, equivalent lateral force procedure is always allowed. Now, if you have a design category D, E, or F building that does not fall in this category or that category, then we need to ask ourselves if our, is our building taller than 160 feet or, or uh, less than or equal to 160 feet. If the structural height that is from the base to the highest point in the lateral force resisting system is less than or equal to 160 feet in height, then we would require dynamic analysis only if our structure has certain quote unquote bad irregularities, which would be horizontal irregularity type 1A or 1B, 1A is torsional, 1B is extreme torsional, or vertical structural irregularity type 1A, 1B, 2 or 3. 1A is weak, is soft story, 1B is extreme soft story, uh, uh, 3, 3, Two or three, I have forgotten, you can look those up in the structural irregularities table. Anyway, those irregularities, those particular irregularities are considered to be, again, quote unquote, bad. And if our structure not taller than 160 feet has any of those irregularities, 
dynamic analysis would be required irrespective of height. If or in the absence of any of those irregularities, equivalent lateral force procedure will be permitted for buildings up to 160 feet in height. If a structure design category D, E or F that does not fall in either this or that category is taller than 160 feet in height, then we have to, uh, then we would allow equivalent lateral force procedure only if two things are true. 